Okay, Shelby, I'm looking at your Instagram, and the first pin post is literally your face on the side of the building of Resorts World, Las Vegas. That's like the equivalent of being in Times Square. That's huge. So uh, I'm going to zoom in later, but that is literally Shelby's face on Resorts World. For people who are looking to get into modeling, maybe they want to be a content creator, maybe they want to be an entrepreneur, coach, maybe they want to even be Miss Cuba, like, all these things Shelby is, which is kind of impressive. I wanted to get her on the podcast because I feel like I'm going to learn today and hopefully everybody who's listening today who wants to learn and be actually successful in this space, um, let's just pick Shelby's brain. <laughs> so this is Shelby. Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Shelby Burns and um, I'm a model, entrepreneur, public speaker, and currently now Miss Cuba. <laughs> wow. That's like a lot to unpack. <laughs> yeah. I think I named everything that I do. Oh, and content creator too. And content what, creator. Yeah. And whatever else God throws at me. So. <laughs> what do you like to do more? Oh gosh. I love, you know, something that I'm really blessed about is every job I've ever had is I loved it. I've never hated, actually I lied. There was one job that I did not like, but I only did it for two weeks. Um, but everything that I currently do right now, I absolutely love. And I'm really blessed that I get to do something that I love. Um, modeling, I think I love it because I'm good at it, but it's taken me 13 years to become good at it. Um, public speaking, I am very passionate about because I love people and I'm passionate about inspiring them to just, hopefully I could change their mind and hopefully give them a different perspective on things. And then with pageants, this is kind of new. I mean, wow. I did it when I was younger, but uh, I do love that too because it's also a platform where I'm able to have a platform where I can give back to the community and volunteer. Like I can do that on my own with or without a title. But now that I have the title Miss Cuba, people have more respect for you and they're willing to work with you more. So I don't know which one I like the most. Oh, and content creating is just so fun too. I to make funny videos. How does it feel to be on like a back of a huge building like a hotel in Vegas, Resorts World. How does that even happen? You know, modeling for 13 years, um, I don't want to say, oh, I made it, right? Because it's like, there's so many more goals and endeavors that I dream to attain. But it has, I don't know, it feels really good um, just for modeling for so long, all the sacrifices that I've had to make along the way, all the times that someone said no to me or they said mm. that I, I just don't have the right look or like whatever. And now it's like, oh, cool, like, that's my head on the side of the building. And it's like, I mean, my mom make a joke about it. I'm like, yeah, I got a big head, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's really cool because the recognition that it gave me and it actually shows like that it's paid off too. Like my friends like post it up all the time. And it's, I mean, we did that shoot. Oh my gosh. Like maybe a year and a half to two years ago now. And you know, the photos are still being used. And now I think people are finally starting to see it the past year. Um, and so it's just, it feels good. It kind of feels a little unreal and I don't want to say I'm jaded because I'm super blessed, but because I've been modeling for so long, you know, I've done really big campaigns. I've done a lot of stuff and people just don't see it because it's in other countries. I did an Adidas campaign when I was 16 or 17 and it was in uh, Tokyo. It was like all in like every other, like all these other countries, but no one saw it. So now that it's in my hometown in Las Vegas, it feels really good. So you're Vegas born and raised? Uh, yes, I'm from born and wow. raised in Las Vegas. There's not a lot of you out here. We're all There's like not. transplants from Cali. Yeah, like me. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God, that must be a huge, huge thing for you, especially like you said, you've been doing modeling so long and people on Instagram nowadays just see sort of the highlight reel. So and that's part of the reason why I wanted to share your story or even actually pick your brain is like talk about like what led up to that. Like what are some of the things I mean, obviously, we're not going to go through your whole life story, but what are some of those moments where like, yeah, no, she's she's not the right person. I don't like your look. I don't know. Break down some of the toxic stuff and maybe some of the bad stuff that people need to be aware of. So at least they can learn from your mistakes. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, modeling is a very tough industry and it's not meant for everybody. I mean, you have to have thick skin. And I'm so grateful that my mom raised me the way that she did. Um, I am super faith based. It's not that there's anything wrong with you or that there's anything wrong with me. It's just the agent or the casting director is looking for a specific look. And my mom always said, it's not you, baby girl, like you got this. Psalms 139, 14, you are fearfully and wonderfully made by the king. So I've always had that firm foundation that's really kept me together because it's so easy to be insecure in this mm. industry. I mean, you're literally being judged right when you walk in the room from the way that your face looks to your body, to your hair, to your nails, to your teeth, like 
everything. So it's really easy to be like, oh my gosh, like I don't look good or this girl's yeah. way prettier than me. And comparison is a thief of all happiness. So I always tell girls, do not compare. Like you are there for a reason. And obviously you're modeling because people want you to model. It's just they want a girl that's with brunette hair. Or they want a different look or whatever. So the sacrifice like is that- Like it's not it, about you. It's, it's about not. what the production company needs, what the director needs. And it's not necessarily like a negative thing. Yes. It's just like you don't fit for what we need. At so, that moment in time. At the moment in time. And so your your tip is to like, what's the tip there? My, like the mindset tip. My mindset anyways is just know like the clients that are for you are for you. And mm. always be consistent and be persistent too. So say if you apply to a modeling agency, I applied to so many modeling agencies when I was like 16 and like literally all of them said no. Okay. And like, I was so devastated and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I thought I was the right measurements. I thought I was tall enough. Everyone says I have a good look. And then a year and a, a year and a half later, I got scouted by my mother agent at the time and she took my photos, she submitted them and I got yeses from all of these different agencies. And it was the same ones. It was just a year later. And so wow. what, what that changed means, though. You know, what that could possibly mean is maybe my look wasn't in season at that time, or maybe they had a girl that looked like me. Because how many people are in the world and how many wow. like, the agents represent hundreds of models. So if they have a girl that looks somewhat similar to me and they already have a relationship with her, they're not going to waste their time investing in me because they already have somebody. Now, a year later, she might have left. She may have gone to a different agency. There's all sort of like circumstances that could have been why they didn't say yes the first time. When you said thick skin, you have to have that resilient skin of rejection because you're getting rejected. You're getting rejected yeah. all the time. That's like actors and actresses. I, yeah. I never could be one. I was on the back end with TV and editing. So, but I saw that my friends in Hollywood, they would just be devastated from rejection. That's, that's it's like tough. you're getting you're competing so much too. It's yeah. like a saturated market. Everyone wants to be one and you're just getting rejection over rejection, but that's built who you are right now, right? Oh, 100%. And like, I moved to New York when I was 16 years old and I remember getting up really early in the morning to get ready for a casting. And I was so excited because my agency, like I just moved there at my first casting, curled my hair, did my makeup, wore a cute outfit. The moment I walked into the audition room, I didn't even have five seconds in the room. The casting director looked at me from across the table and she said, no, thank you. Whoa. And then I was like this, because I went to say hi because I'm super bubbly. I was like, huh. okay. And I just turned around and walked out. So that hour and a half of me getting ready in the morning was like wasted, right? <sighs> but she's also seen hundreds of models that day. So she doesn't want to waste any more time. And at the at that time in my life, being 16 years old where it's you're so impressionable and like you're still figuring out who you are, it did hurt. But now when I go to a casting, I'm more aware of, okay, what brand is for me is for me. And also to like, not to take it personal. Wow. Do you coach? You're a coach now, right? We're going to yeah. segue a little, that a little bit. That's why I do a little bit. Well, when I met you, you were saying you were like a confidence coach. What does yes. that mean? Yeah. What does that actually? So it's so funny how I dove into that. And this is something that's still fairly new for me. So I have a girlfriend and she has started her business, but she coaches women to be more feminine. And she's like scaled her business to a seven figure business. I'm so proud of her. Wow. And I remember before she did that, I told her, I was like, what are you doing working at this other job? Like quit that job and do what God's called you to do. You should be making way more money. And also you're so intelligent. You're like, don't waste the talents that God's given to you. And she took that on her own. And then she came up with her business. And then she, we were just talking numbers and like how we both like trying to grow our businesses and all that stuff. And we're very transparent with each other. And she's like, Shelby, you know, you, you need to be a confidence coach. You're so confident the way you carry yourself, the way you talk, the way you like just walk, like everything. And I was like, a what? A confidence <laughs> coach? Like, what do you mean? Because to me, confidence has always come so naturally. And I truly believe it's just from the young age of just being resilient, having the mom that I have. Like my mom was born in Cuba, like resilient. You have to figure it out like in life. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, let me let me pray about this. So I fasted for three days. And this was a year, like what the beginning of this year. I wanted to get out of a bartending job. So I had like a bartending side hustle where they hire models. I've had a lot of side hustles, <laughs> lots of jobs. And um, I was fasting about it. And I said, okay, God, if, if you want me to be a confidence coach, what is this going to look like in my life? And how do you want me to go about it? And like make it known to me that this is what you want me to do. And I kid you not, after that three-day fast, someone messages me the next day on Instagram. I've never posted about this. I've never talked about it. And they're like, hey, Shelby, you're just so confident. I really need someone to 
like coach me and train me to be more confident. And I said, wow, that is just such an answered prayer. And I said, okay, like, let me, let me figure this out. Cause I've trained girls how to do runway walks. I've coached girls how to model, but like being a confidence coach is so different. So I wrote up like my course and I was like, all right, let's get started. Wow. So you actually have a course for this, huh? <laughs> yeah, Whoa. yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. I feel like that's a, let's, let's even unpack that. Like most people don't know how to be confident. Right. And I think a lot of it is upbringing. Right. Yes. And then obviously circumstances that you um, overcome as a child, teen, sure. adult. What's a big tip? So for me, the biggest thing for confidence is my firm foundation. So a lot of my confidence does come from God. And the Bible even talks about that. But if we're not talking about having a faith based and you want me to just give you some other tips, confidence also comes from consistency. So whatever it is that you're doing in life, if you're consistent at it, you're eventually going to be very confident in it. Now, let's say you're going to something that's so unfamiliar that you just have no idea how to handle yourself or do, and you're like a little insecure in the room. Most people feel the exact same way that you do. Most people also have social anxiety. Most people don't know how to carry a conversation and keep it going. So just remember that people feel the exact same way that you do. And when you're just your authentic self and you're friendly and you're outgoing and just ask questions and being vulnerable and humble is when you're going to realize like that's the real version of you. And then confidence is eventually going to come because being comfortable also leads to confidence. So in that scenario, walking into a room where you know no one, make a friend. It takes a friend to be a friend, you know? Yeah. And we were talking before this. I was like, I'm a little nervous right now. I'm just going to bullshit my way through this. <laughs> but I feel like also for me, it's, it's one of those where you're – it's a skill to almost push yourself w when you're uncomfortable. Yeah, and then from those reps w with anything – you start to get confident. Yeah. Like I always look at it like the gym analogy. You can't do 300 push-ups without doing one. So yes. it's like the same thing with anything I do. I'm like, most people are like, how do you do what you do? I'm like, I don't know. I just go forward one step at a time and just try not to trip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? for sure. So I'm just BSing just, my wealth through, way through life. I'm yeah, 44. I'm being, yeah, I'm still kind of, I never know what I'm doing most of the time. I'm like. <laughs> I feel the exact same boop. way. <laughs> And, and it's, I really want to touch on that too. It's like you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm a firm believer in the power of your words has so much power over you. So even if I feel a certain way, say if I feel insecure, I'm not going to let my brain meditate on that. I'm going to take that thought and I'm going to rebuke it. And I'm going to fill myself with words that are fruitful, words that are empowering. I'm a really big person on like, I used to do this. I haven't done it in a long time. I'd like pull out my phone. I'd record myself and hype myself up in my phone and talk to myself because I'm that girl. Because your words do carry power and your brain believes whatever you tell it. So even if you feel insecure, even if you feel like lazy and you don't want to go to the gym, you tell yourself, no, I am going to do it. I am going to go to the gym. I do feel confident. I am beautiful. I am really intelligent and smart, right? Because I believe that we live in a world where there's just battle of the mind and mm -hmm. spiritual warfare. And it's like, you cannot let your mind overcome your thoughts because it's going to overtake your life if you allow it. And so I'm really big on like rebuking all that. And confidence comes from what you hear too. You said something interesting about um, pulling out your phone. If you do something, it's kind of hard to feel something else. So sure. like usually that's why I think that's why fitness and physical ex exercise helps depression because if you're doing something, and then it's harder to feel like bad because like you're feeling something else at, at the same time, right? Yes. Like I think there's like this analogy if you're like, um, I don't know, just like pain. If you're feeling a certain pain and you touch like ice, your body's going to go into a different mode. Can't feel two things at the same time, even though, even though if you want to try it. You can, you can think it, but like. Your body's not going to know the difference. Yeah, physically you yes. have one thing to do. And if you're doing something fun, like even just getting up and filming yourself and hyping yourself up, then like. You know, that in itself kind of makes makes you feel better. 100%. <laughs> right? And I'm one of those people where, like, I, I have struggled with anxiety in the past. And, like, Same. I mean, from a young age, like, my mom got me in therapy in fourth grade. I had a great childhood. Nothing's wrong. Like, why was I feeling these things? And so at an early age, I learned a lot of, like, tactics and, like, all that stuff of how to overcome it. And it's exactly what you said. Okay, if your body's starting to feel anxiety, get up and do some jumping jacks. Mm -hmm. Maybe go for a little run. Get those endorphins released because your body's not going to know the difference between having an anxiety attack and you just getting a good pump on. <laughs> yeah. well, how important is the fitness side of things to be like a model and the pressure to be a certain like weight, height, you know, yeah. measurement? Like, I don't know. For somebody who is getting into that space. I have a niece that is thinking about modeling. She's 17. Like, what would you tell a young person 
who is just like a developing mind that's 17, yeah. young, sometimes grown men saying you should do this or you need to do that. Like, how do you battle that conversation yeah. or equip a young person with that skill set when they're just learning life? For sure. First off, I would tell her that she is beautiful, that she is so intelligent and that she is so worthy and that if any man or woman tells you to change who you are, that they can, I'm not going to say that word on this podcast, <laughs> but they can, you know, whatever. Because at the end of the day, you also want to be authentic. You want to be true to yourself. If you conform to this world and conform to the standard of what they want, you're not going to be happy because I tried that for so many years. When I first moved out to New York, I was 16 years old. And when you're 16, you're typically like the perfect measurements. Your body's not developed. I'm 26. Like... I'm a woman now, okay? Like my body's changed. And at the age of 16, my hips were a 33, right? That's very tiny. And they, or it was a 33 and a half or 34. And they're like, oh, you just have to lose a half inch. And I killed myself wow. trying to meet the requirements and measurements for their standard. I was with Ford Models. I mean, it's a big deal. Like they are very like, they don't play. And so I did all these things. I worked out three times a day. I did like all these different workout classes. I I barely ate which not only wasn't healthy for my brain because like you need a certain amount of food for your brain, but like my body just, I wasn't healthy and I wasn't happy and that's not a life worth living, right? And yeah. so I did walk away from the modeling industry for a little bit. I think it took like a year off for my mental health because it was just so toxic. Um, and then I got back into it and I got back into it of who I authentically am, right? Like I'm an athlete. Like I do CrossFit every single day. I have more muscle mass than the average model, I'd say. I'm more of like a fit girl. Back then, they had me more of like a high fashion model where it's like there's so many different avenues of modeling that you can take, whether it's high fashion, it's commercial, it's fit. Like you want to make sure you're doing what you want to do and not what your agents want you to do. And the reason they put you in certain areas is because they think like you could thrive here. They put me at high fashion because I have a high fashion face, but I've always had a fit body. Is high fashion the runway stuff? High fashion is runway. Cool. High fashion is like Gucci, Alexander Wang, like Chanel, Dior, like the, those more upscaled brands where their models are very, they're very tiny. But, you know, the thing is nowadays we live in a day and age where it's more about inclusivity, which is beautiful. Um, it's also about influencers too. So praise God that I've been able to, you know, I can still work be, and like be my measurements and be happy at what I am because of just like the change in like this uh, avenue, right? Like with influencers taking over too. Um, but I will say I had a little encounter at, um, uh, swim week Las Vegas that was what last week and um, I only was able to do Monday because I was filming, filming a commercial the other two days and I get on set it's at Resorts World I'm feeling confident I'm like this is my place like everyone's gonna want to book me for their show you know I'm five eight and a half so I'm technically on the shorter side of modeling should be five you should be five nine wow um and then it's Vegas so measurements out here it's different it's more like sexy women whereas like in New York it's more like zeros you have to be standard but out here it's like you can have some you can have curves it's like west coast the west coast is a little bit more it, chill yes it's different yeah i get on set and my girlfriend goes hey put your heels on i go what do you mean put my heels on like we're just gonna do fittings and she's like put your heels on like i'm telling you okay so I put my heels on we go up to a designer he goes everyone take your shoes off and we take off our shoes and he goes he's looking at all of us and i'm standing there and i haven't been to like a runway show in a minute because i just, it does runways don't pay the best let's be honest okay um, fashion week, like, unless you're like the top 1%, like you're not getting paid that much. So in New York, I'd always like stand up really, really tall. Cause I knew I was shorter, but here in Vegas, it's like, I'm one of the taller girls I thought. And so <laughs> I'm standing there and I'm looking around me. I'm like, Oh man, like I'm one of the shorter girls right now. And I'm talking like an inch or two, but still it makes a big difference on the runway. Like they're that cutthroat. And he looks at us and he goes, no. And he like shoes us all off. And I was like, Whoa, like I haven't, I haven't been denied a runway in a minute because I have a good walk. Like I felt so confident in it. And I was like, all right, whatever. I was like, no, I want to walk for him. So I, I I I bend over, I put my heels back up. And my mom always tells me, put your hair up because you look more striking. You, you can see your cheekbones. You look, you, you just stand out. I bend over, put my shoes on, put my hair up. And as I stand up, he goes, Oh, wait, actually, can you stay? And I was the only model that got picked out of that lineup. Wow. Which it's it's kind of crazy to think, but you know. Him just looking at us and like looking us up and down because it was like about measurements and it's about if we're, if we're not going to fit in the dresses. Like I've had moments where I've been on set and I didn't fit in the clothes in New York. And that's like really uncomfortable conversation to have with the client. Hey, I don't fit in the pants. Sorry. What do I do? Like, it's really awkward. But, you know, same thing with the Swim League Las Vegas. It was one of those things where it's like, man, like you're, I'm being judged. I haven't been judged this hard in a minute. <laughs> 
It's like, whoop. You're like, hey, you didn't pull the card. Um, do you know whose face is on the side of this fucking building? <laughs> I'm like, I'm on the room keys, man. Yeah. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. I haven't picked up one in a minute, but when they came out, I grabbed a bunch so my mom could have some. Oh my God, I want one. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, there's so many things you said there that was kind of that's super interesting. Like, first off, like being resilient and trying again, like even though you were reje rejected, you got up was like, I'm going to give it a shot. What's the worst that could happen? Him say no again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's a great, great sort of tip for people is like, just, just do it. Just try again. Yeah. Yeah. Try again. It's always just another person behind the decision yeah. <laughs> it's it, we're all humans yeah and it's like what you said my dad always said no one's gonna push for you more than yourself Nice. because i actually got no runway shows that night yeah okay to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> that's how it started and then i got picked for him and then i went to two other castings like right and they were like mm, and i was like what the heck all right and i was like Just whatever you know what heck? maybe maybe i'm only meant to walk one and then i went up to another designer and he was like oh i don't know maybe and then um I'm like waiting. And then another casting director came and grabbed me. He's like, who are you walking for? And I told him, he goes, why aren't you walking for the other ones? I was like, because I said, no. <laughs> and he was like, no, you're coming with me. And then he put me on to them. So it's it's like what you said, like, just because someone said no, doesn't mean there's not gonna be a yes later. And yeah. you have to push for yourself. You really do. Um, is there a huge like scene here in Vegas for models and? Um, I don't know. I feel like my work's a little like scattered. Like yeah. I do a lot of random like thing, right? So it's like, I'll fly out to California for some jobs. I fly out to New York for some stuff. I do work here, but it's mostly like my um, content creation and then like, yep. you know, a good gig every once in a while. Vegas, I think, thrives on like the convention industry, which is great, mm. but I don't really consider that like modeling modeling. It's more like a beautiful girl is being a sales model. Yeah, that's where I met you. We were at mm -hmm. a huge wedding uh, video and photography convention, saw you twice uh, at those things, yes. and we just kind of chatted. Um, so you're saying there's a lot, there's an industry for that here because Vegas is such a specific sort of, it's like we, either we, show like shows on the strip, you know, or like, do you get a lot of like, like, like how do you end up on the building? Like, you know, how do I end up on yeah, the like, resort building? Up, yeah, okay. Like okay. Poster boards and so, stuff like that. There's a lot of billboards in Vegas. There is, yeah. there is. And you know, that's when we get lucky is like when we have the campaigns, like the casinos do campaigns, right? Because Vegas is a really interesting area for models. It's not like New York. It's not like LA. It's Vegas. Like it, it has a niche to it. Right. Um, I actually got my, I booked myself on resorts world. Oh wow. Um, so I was actually doing a photo shoot for Hardeen and we were shooting over at foreplay and we were just doing like an advertisement for them. Right. And we're doing it. And when you're on set, this is like crucial for all models or actually anyone in general, just trying to hustle. Anytime you're on set, anytime you're at a job, you want to present present yourself to the best of who you are, right? So it's like network, talk to everybody because you don't know who in the room is watching you and you don't know who's going to get you a job. I've always said humility is so attractive. So when a model comes on set, don't just be a model, like help out, like offer a helping hand. They're probably going to tell you no, but like I've been on set in New York where I'm like, oh, you want me to take the trash out? And they're like, no, like that's weird, you know? But um, anyone can get you a job. And I met a marketer at the time she wasn't working there. She was working at Hardeen, I believe. And then a year and a half later, she started working at Resorts World and she knew that I modeled. She's like, hey, like, I want to book you for this. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. But I didn't know that that photo was going to be displayed oh. on the outside of Resorts World. I thought it was just going to be for like, like I knew it was going to be like billboards, but I didn't know it was going to be like that billboard. Like, awesome. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about content creation, right? Because uh, that's something you, you said you really like doing, yes. right? <laughs> I see you doing pranks, which are hilarious. Thank you. Like one went viral, right? Like, I've had a few go viral now. Like yeah. viral is like past a million. Yeah. In, like I have one million. video that's like 24 million. Another one's like 7 million. I think I have another 8 million one. Yeah. You're like going around like holding random people's hands <laughs> in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is like when I watch this and I'm like, oh, this is going to blow Shelby up too because it's like pranks are the number one like – viral things for content right now yeah um, game show questions are pretty good too cat stuff pet stuff but pranks and and like stuff like that goes really viral talk about um yeah talk about content creation how do you go about doing that um like how do i get into it or yeah. how, what's my like plan for the day i don't know like 
you know, we're all kind of content creators because we're on Instagram and active, but like, are you like, is there a schedule? Are you like, oh. I'm going to plan 20 pranks today? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, every day is so sporadic for me. So my schedule is like, it's super jam packed. Um, and I try to be super organized, but I also have so many different businesses that I run where it's like, I have to be present for all of them. So I have to really space out my day accordingly. How do you do that? Google, Google Calendar? No, I don't. I don't use Google. I just use like. Yeah, you didn't accept my invite. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. Sorry, I don't. I I put everything in my regular calendar on my phone, and I just text you. Um, but yeah, I just put everything in my schedule, like on my just on my iPhone, right? And then I like a, you have a to do list. Yeah, and then next to my bed at night, I'll kind of review what I have to do tomorrow, and I'll like write down a list, like okay, this is a priority tomorrow. Then I have to do this. So from like. Uh, 10 a.m. to 12, I'll work on this. And then from this time, this time I'll work out because like I need to work out for like my mental so health. So you're like just, time blocking basically? Yeah, yeah. I really need that because I get distracted really easily in my like day-to-day -day life. And then things come up and then bookings happen. And then like mm -hmm. clients call and you're like, okay, I got to be ready to shift. Um, but if no one bothers me, then I just try to follow that guideline. You know, I also have a bonus daughter. I also have a fiance. So it's mm -hmm. like as a woman, it's my job to, you know, nurture and support. So I also have to be mindful of everyone else around me too. Yeah. So that's lot. like a lot of hats you're wearing. That's a lot. And, um, <laughs> the, where did the pranks come about? So how the pranks come about? I work with, uh, he's awesome. He's one of my good friends. His name's Debreezy. I've worked with him for four years and he is just so intelligent. He's, I call him, he's like a wizard for the internet. All right. Like he's just <laughs> really good. And um, we've been working together for four years and he will give me some advice on like what to do or like, he's like, oh, like, you're, you're a pretty girl. Like you should go out and do this. Like that'd be really cool. And it's so funny because for so long I was like, man, like how do I gain more followers on Instagram? Like back before videos were a thing, it was shooting with other photographers that were like really big and coming up with a really cool concept. And like, you know, you'd get each other's followers, right? Like yeah. back in the day. Collaboration, yeah. Yeah. Now it's all about videos. So you're like, okay, what, what do I make? And I see all my girlfriends here in Vegas making like really sexy, hot, hot girl videos. So I was like, I'm going to be a hot girl. I want to be pretty. And I like would make these videos and like bikinis and like, you know, like professional, like nothing like overly sexy, but just like advertising for companies in a swimsuit, more glam. Dude, those videos would get like 4,000 views. But then when I'm like a funny girl on the internet, then I get millions of views. So I was like, all right, I'll take it. I'm not a hot girl. I'm a funny girl. And like, that's what it is. Well, you're both. That's what makes <laughs> it kind of, that, that you've hit the two check marks. You're funny you. and hot, right? So it's like, <laughs> Now I really have to watch. And then you're like, oh, I'm going to play some pranks. I'm like, there you go. You just hit the three check marks for virality. <laughs> hey, thank you. So, yeah, that's just kind of how it came about. I love writing scripts. Did you so you write those out first? Um, well, the ones where it's like hand holding, like you kind of just go out in public and like you wait. Um, but like there's some that like I have where I'll actually like prank people like like in my household or like. I try not to do my fiance because I feel like he, ah. with his business, he's just, he'd be like, oh my gosh, like I'm so stressed out. But like my roommate, I've pranked my roommate before or, or I've, I've tried. I like got a sweatsuit at Walmart and I like hot glued like bags of chips on it. Okay. So like when I put the sweatsuit on, there's a bunch of bags of chips on me. Okay. So if I were to lay sideways, it looks like I'd blend in with the wall and there'd be a bag of chips on the counter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Kind of. And I was what like, is happening? so I was like, yelled for my roommate. I was like, Hey, like for him to come out to the kitchen, and I like try to jump out and scare him um, or just like just stuff like that. So that those ones are like more thought out. Right. Like that, that, that takes a little bit more. But the ones where you're holding hands, it's like you just go out in public. But I love writing scripts. I'm pretty creative, especially when I work out. I get all these ideas. I'm like, oh, I should film this. That'd be so funny. Um, just like things that aren't like common to see, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see your pranks. Like, I'll, like <laughs> visually, like be there, like even just watching behind yeah. the scenes and just like kind of You can laughing. come out and film with me sometime. Really? Heck yeah. I would love to. I need someone to like Let's film go. with because I'm always like calling friends. I'm like, hey, can no, you come film me? I would yeah? do it. Yeah. I oh, would, dude, I, I have so many good ideas. Okay. We're going to film some pranks. <laughs> I love this. This is awesome. I love it. Okay. You said you have a lot of companies. What are some of the companies? You're an entrepreneur. Sorry, I'm adjusting this mic. You're an entrepreneur as well, right? Yes. So talk about the business side of things, like even like the modeling and like knowing your finances and knowing your contracts and just uh, so you making sure you're not really getting, you know, screwed essentially. Yeah. So the biggest thing is like, I guess my first job was modeling, right? Like yeah. getting signed with all these agencies. And like, I will say at a young age, thank God I had my parents because they had to read the contracts for me and like sign for me. But then when I turned 18, like I had to do everything. And like, I lived in New York, by my, I lived in New York by myself. So it was like, okay, I had to be diligent and read. Did I? No, I was a kid. I didn't read a lot of stuff, which came back and definitely like, you know, kicked me in the butt. 
Um, because wow. I had a picture end up on an advertisement, which shouldn't have, right? But because I signed a release form, uh, they owned the rights to it. And then I never got compensated for my image. So things like that you learn, but you know, you learn because you experience it. So hopefully you guys can learn from this so you don't have to go through what I went through. <laughs> How much negotiation do you need to do? Like are things most more so like cut and dry when it comes to these contracts or is it like, you know, you're doing runways, this is what you get. Yeah. It kind of depends who you're working with and how big of a company it is. I mean, if you're working with like if you're doing a photo shoot for Chanel, like their contract's going to be I'm pretty heavy. If you're doing with uh, doing a photo shoot with a small local company, like there's probably not going to be a contract and mm -hmm. it might just be like verbal mm -hmm. agreement or a text message, which I know in the state of Nevada, you can use text message as a contract. But before you sign anything, read it, understand it, like get a highlighter, make it fun, like highlight the things you don't understand. Because once you sign something like mm -hmm. You, you abide by that or you can get sued right. <laughs> or like you're going to get screwed over because your images is being used and all these people are making money off of your, your image where it's like you just were seen. So read the fine print basically. Yeah, read everything. And I will say I got really lucky because I'm very dyslexic and um, too. It, that's the kind of tough for me. That's something I've always had to navigate. I and mean, my mom's dyslexic. She put me through a really great school that helped me. But God knows what I struggle with. And I think that's why uh, my fiance is an attorney. because He's a oh. very good attorney. <laughs> We were talking about your other companies. So content creation, like what you have, you said you have a logo here somewhere. Yeah, this is my old logo. Maybe I shouldn't show it. Um, so I have, I guess, like four different companies that I run. So like me as my own business as a model. Is that it, an LLC? Uh, you should get an LLC. Technically, I don't have one mm -hmm. under like Shelby's modeling because I just book it through like my other business because it, it goes together. Um, and then I have like my confidence coaching and then I have Mint Management, which is my um, talent management, if you will. It's more like a media company as well. Like we go in and we create content for small businesses. We provide the influencers. We provide the models if they want to. We work with a few med spas here in Vegas. I also book models for Resorts World. Um, oh. So that's been really cool. So that's the media agency. You have kind of like a media like, sort of management company. Yeah, I don't like to call it talent. I don't like to call it a modeling agency. I just like to call it a management. It's called Mint Management. Yeah. Um. So like, it means like you're meant to be where you are in life. And so I always tell all my talent because when I started modeling, they were like, you need to look like this and you need to do this and that you're not here yet in life. And it's like, I feel like in life we're always chasing after what we should be and what we could be. But it's like, no, like you're meant to be exactly where you are. And so that's kind of like my testimony to my talent, to my media team, like just work hard, become so good at your craft that we can just benefit other people around us. Because at the end of the day, like it's not about money. It's also about like, growing the community. It's also about bettering and helping other people, you know? Yeah. So I always try to like work really good with my clients, make my talent happy, make my media te team happy and just like just grow together. So those are three things you listed. Those three businesses right now. And then I have Shelby's closet, which is oh. a online subscription uh, based clothing company. So what it is, we have a warehouse in New York. And so it's all these high end brands. So it's like French connection, all these other ones. And then you would subscribe to Shelby's closet. It's $124 a month. And then you'd get, you can hold up to 10 clothes, um, like 10 clothes at a time, right? So you're like, oh, I want this dress and this dress. And these outfits are like $300, $200. I don't have the budget to go spend all that money, but I want to wear cute clothes. So we'll send you the box of what you want. And then if you're like, okay, I love this outfit, don't like this. And then you're like, oh, I need something new coming up. You'll just send back two, outf two outfits and then we'll send you back another two. So you can get- Do they keep them or rent them? So it's renting. Yeah. So like right now I it's have like, like eco-friendly. It is eco-friendly because yeah. it's like we live in a day and age where fast fashion is just so prevalent. And it's just it, one, it's sad. And then two, like when you buy an outfit, how many times do you really wear it? Yeah. You know, unless yeah. it's like your favorite jeans you had for 10 years or like that really comfy shirt. But when you're going to like nice events, I don't personally want to go spend $300 on an outfit I'm only going to wear once or twice um, that's going to sit in my closet. But I want to look nice. <laughs> So that's Shelby's subscription. It's called Shel cool. Shelby's Closet. Oh, Closet. Uh, that's genius. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so people think it's my personal closet. You're not renting my clothes. No, <laughs> but no, it's a cool name. I like it. It's four. So those are four things. How do you manage all that stuff? Yeah, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like on a podcast here talking to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say balance, but there Wait. really is no balance <sighs> in my life. <laughs> that's so nuts. And then, well, you said you and I both have ADHD, right? So I think... Um, you ever do medication for it? I didn't. Uh, no, no, yeah. I don't like medication. I try to like not even take like Tylenol, Tylenol if I have like a headache. But I feel like people with ADHD, when they've hyper-focused, that's, that's how we can do like sort of these 
multitasking for sure projects that involve so much like thought <laughs> yeah and that's why i think we're so good at doing so many different endeavors yeah. because your brain's like thinking like a million miles an hour and then we just like do, 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 do all these different things at once yeah. right like my desk looks insane like at home <laughs> like you'd be like what is going on oh it's God, like show this closet later. this that. dude even in my purse right now i have like because i have to go to three other things today filming wise so i have like i have like costumes in there and then i have another thing for after just yeah what, so what's, what are you doing after uh, after this, I'm going to go to the office and I'm going to um, film re like reactions. And um, what's the office? What do you mean the office? You have an um, office? No. So uh, this is an office that I with my my, the, my friend that I told you about, um, mm -hmm. Jabrizi. I'm going to go over to their office. Uh, it's called Network Media. And so Jabrizi is like my manager, but like I'm also an independent contractor. But we like, work together. Um, so I go there, I'm going to film like my face and then I'm going to send it to him and he's going to send it to somebody to like edit and like do all the stuff that I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And then, um, yeah, he kind of just helps manage me in that area. So I okay. have, I have people that help me, right? Yeah. Like I don't do it solely on my own. Like Shelby's closet. I have a whole team behind me, you know? Yeah. The thing that I mostly do by myself, I'd say is like ment management and then like my confidence coaching. Like that okay. is by myself. I did have my assistant for a little bit, but he moved away and I was very sad. <laughs> so for Shelby's closet, like how does that work? Um, you're sort of just like upper man, like sort of project managing everything. Yeah. So I'm mostly the face and then the marketing side. Nice. And then I have a whole team in New York that does like the hard work. Yeah. Like yeah. they like find the, the brands to work with. They like make sure the warehouse is good. Like they send out all the clothes. Like they, they have an accountant on the team. Like they do all that. I'm just like the forefront. Hell yeah. That's awesome. We haven't even talked about the, the, the crown. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah like Shelby yeah. does so much stuff. So talk about, um, so you're like, what is this, Miss Cuba? I'm Miss Cuba International Whoa, 2024. Right for a second. <laughs> wow, that's like a real crown. Yeah, it's so big. That's crazy. Can I put this on my stories in this podcast? This is cool. So talk about it while I'm doing an Instagram story. <laughs> yeah, so I'm super excited. I'm actually be going to Japan um, October 29th to November 13th to be competing for Miss International 2025. And it's wow. gonna be such a great experience. I mean, anything where I'm able to grow my platform and just speak about what I believe is my purpose for the world and what I'm able to give back, like pageantry does give you that platform, you know? And I'm gonna be working aside all these other incredible women, like 81 other countries, right? And all of them are outspoken, they're all confident. Like some of them are lawyers, some of them are doctors. We get to go to a huge women's conference and meet women that have like huge companies. And so I feel so honored to represent Cuba and like get set to Japan for this incredible experience. So talk about that pageant. What is that? Like for people who don't know what that is. Yeah. So Miss International, it's not just your typical beauty pageant. This is a beauty pageant that also has a platform for women to work with the SDGs, with the United Nations. It's really a cultural pageant. So you get to work with, I mean, all the other countries, I'm going to go meet all these incredible women and just get to work alongside them is huge. So it's really about culture, culture. It's about respect, honor, like learning about the other people. So, and then it gives you a platform to talk about what your SDG is. So mine is a mental health, big, big advocate for that. This is something that I've struggled with at a really early young age. I mean, I was in fourth grade getting anxiety attacks for for who knows what reason. And I started therapy at a very young age. Um, there's also times in my life where I had anxiety so bad to where it was crippling and I couldn't get out of bed. And if you follow me on Instagram, if you know me on Instagram, I'm up very early. I'm like rising grind, go getter, happy go getty girl all the time. And so when I share my anxiety with people, they're like, what? Like you, yeah. you've struggled with that. Like you've had crippling anxiety where you couldn't get out of bed for days and like felt like you had no purpose and absolutely no motivation. Yes, I'm human. And I feel all of those things. And the beautiful thing is I've learned and I'm still learning how to uh, constantly overcome it, right? And I truly believe like the most powerful thing that you have is your voice, right? So when you walk into a room, it's my gift to change the atmosphere and hopefully change someone's perspective. And so if I could just share, I call them like little nuggets. If I could share my nuggets with someone else and, you know, possibly give them hope or just change anything that they might be going through, I pray that I can do that. And I pray that the words that I speak could just encourage them. So that's why it's it's so passionate for me because it's something that's I've held dear to my heart and I've struggled with and I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. 
Well, Shelby, I feel like we could talk for another two hours, but like last words for anyone trying to be a content creator, model, entrepreneur, what would you advise somebody going into this space? Yeah, I would tell them you're only limited by your own belief and that you can attain anything and any desire that you want in life. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I love it. Where can they find you, Shelby? Right here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Shelby2B. That's S-H-E-L-B-I number two, letter B. On YouTube, it's my full name, Shelby Burns. Last name is spelled B-Y-R-N-E-S. And TikTok is Shelby2B. Everything is pretty much Shelby2B because yeah. you got to be what you want to be in life. I love it. I'm excited to do uh, to do some pranks with you. <laughs> I can't wait. This would be awesome. <laughs> All right. That's it. Woo! That was good. Thank you. I thought that was like natural. For us. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I, we could really talk for a while. Oh, 100%. Just, yeah.